Hey, it's Ben. Welcome back to Mustache Moto. Today I got a video that I kind of didn't want to make because it's going to be a bit of a knuckle buster. Um, we're going to talk about changing tires and more specifically breaking the bead on the tire when you start to change it. And I'm going to do it seven times, seven different ways in a row. So not going to be a whole lot of fun for me, but I want to do this and figure out what the best way to do it is, which tools work the best, and that'll give you a lot of different options depending on how much you want to spend and what you have around. So if you don't understand what the bead of the tire is, that's that inner circumference, the edge of the tire, and, and that bead pops into the edge of the rim. It, it locks in when you fill the tire the first time, and it's, it's in there really tight, really snug. That's what keeps your air in, that's what keeps your tire on. So first thing you have to do is you have to pop that. You have to break it down and push it into the center of the tire so that it's not connected that firmly anymore before you can start taking the tire off. So the first thing we're going to do is use a little valve core removal tool. Um, I've also got them on the end of my, my valve caps, valve stem caps. But we're going to do this and take the valve stem, the core out, to let all the air out so that we can get started. Once that's almost done, I think you can hear me again. Um, one key here, one thing that will be very helpful for you if you do this is if you're in a cold climate especially, take your wheel off and warm the tire up. That may mean leave it in your workshop next to a heater vent or um, even if you're in a warmer climate, sit it out in the sun and let the sun heat up the, the black rubber. It'll make it more pliable, make it easier to use. So I'm going to start off with the first way I learned to break a bead on a tire and that's with a really big C-clamp. So I'm going to open this thing up all the way. And I'm going to slide it on the tire. Open it even more. Not on the rim, but on the tire. And it's about in the same spot underneath. Of course, I can't show that too well. And now I'm just going to start cranking it down. Now I'll say I already broke the bead on this tire once today because I wanted it to be a fair comparison. When the tire's been on for a long time, it's a little harder to, to break the bead because it's stuck, stuck together a little bit over time. So this way, every time I do it, it will be the same. Takes a little time, a little bit of muscle. It's already starting to peel down here. And it's off. See, I can now push it all the rest of the way in. I'm going to slide. So I use these when I change tires, but they're good for other things too. And this is cut up pieces of laundry detergent bottles. Thick, heavy plastic, but it's still flexible. And I'm going to slide that right there so I don't scratch my rim. So I'm going to take off my. Let's move this around. Please. All right, so that's all the way off. And then we'd flip it over and you do the other side. So I'm going to refill this. And we're going to go on to our next. Uh, our next tool. All right, my next tool is going to be, this is actually a Viver, Vever brand, two-piece tire break, bead breaking tool. Um, Motion Pro makes one. I may have to link the Motion Pro one because I don't think Amazon sells these. Uh, these are a little bit cheaper, uh, but, but the Motion Pro ones are aluminum, so they're going to be much lighter. So these, I'm going to slide this one in. This piece comes in underneath, and then you pry it apart. And again, I'm going to use a piece of plastic here. So I'm going to wedge that in, 
just so I don't scratch. Take the fork apart and just work it in here. All right, then I'm gonna take the hook apart, slide that in. Then I'm gonna squeeze them together and push it down. And that is off, wow. That's much better than I thought. I really, I haven't used this one and I didn't think it was gonna work that well. So that's, beads off. I might get through this without busting my knuckles at all. I can't do this one. All right, so next up we're gonna try, and I've never done this one either, but I've seen that you can use three tire spoons. The spoons I'm gonna to use to change the, actually take the tire on and off with, but I can use these similar to the um, Vever tool or the Motion Pro tool, and I'm gonna kind of wedge these in and then this, and we're gonna work them apart. So let's see what we can do. And again, I'm gonna put this in here. One spoon, two, let's put those together, put this one in, and I think, let's see, Oops, I might not need all three, put one up and two down, get that in better. Let's do this so that I can, I can, this is gonna pry up a little bit more. Mm. It's starting to come. I'm gonna move a little bit further to the side. Did that wrong, this should go underneath the plastic. I'm not going to protect much doing it that way. I wonder if I did it. I'm going to try and use this and pry it up instead on the middle one to kind of <clears throat> no nope. let's try up on the spoons and down on this one in a little deeper, maybe. Ah, you hear the air? I think I've got it. Yep, so that worked. That's amazing. Um, I think it takes some practice it's a pain in the butt, this one, but I guess if you're in a pinch, you might have to use that. All right, next up, we've got a bead breaking stand basically from uh, Harbor Freight and tire goes on and lever pushes it down. So give that a shot. It's a little funky because the single sided swing arm on the beamer, it's got a big hole here. I'm gonna use a piece of wood to kind of hold this in place. It's a little, 
I wonder about putting a lot of pressure on the uh, with the um, spokes, but may as well do it in the name of science. So where does this go? I think that's about right. This workbench obviously is a little too high for this. Slide in the tire. I did it. So that worked. A little bit. It's a big stand, a little clunky with this type of wheel, but it did get the job done, so that's not too bad. By the way, this was came with some other stuff that I bought. I probably never would have bought this on my own. But it's interesting to try. This set back up, and we'll try another app, another way. Okay, next up is the two by four method, because we're gonna use a scrap of two by four as the lever, and we're gonna use a little uh, two by two piece of scrap that's cut at an angle, probably not necessary um, to push down on the rubber. So you're gonna need a, a fixed point to do this with. I'm gonna use my shed here. That's about the perfect height. You could use the underside of an SUV or a car or underneath the car tire, kind of the edge of it, um, or anything you've got that's, that's not gonna move anywhere. So we're gonna put the wedge on the tire here this underneath the shed, it's a fixed point, and push. There we go. That bead's broken. All right. So this method is one to use if you're out in the middle of the woods um, and you're in a real pinch. So we're gonna, we got the bike on the center stand, we're gonna tilt the bike and use the side stand, put it on the rubber and lean the bike down to onto it to break the bead. Hell no, I'm not doing that. Okay, <laughs> there's no way I'm doing that with it just being me here and no wheel on the back. Um, too much opportunity to drop this bike and bust something on here. So I would save this for an absolute emergency. Um, and if you're riding with somebody with a buddy, you got two bikes, use their bike that has two wheels on it and they can catch from behind to make sure you don't fall. But to, to tilt this bike back and get the wheel under it there, I ain't doing it, but it's an option. One more method here. This last one might be a little sketchy. It involves a car and a two by four. And what we're gonna do is line this up so that when we back the car up, it puts the weight on the two by four, and hopefully pushes the tire down. Let's see what happens. This might be sketchy. Might work. Boom. That wasn't too bad. Bead's broken. And there you have it. Seven different ways to break the bead on the motorcycle tire. From free 
to expensive, from easy to a pain in your butt. Um, really, I've been doing this for 20 years, mostly with the C-clamp method, and then also with the two by fours. I thought I was gonna have bloody knuckles today. I thought I was gonna be cussing, but this wasn't really that bad. I mean, all the methods worked pretty well today. And I have to say, this is what surprised me. This tool worked great. I bought this expecting for it not to work. That's why I bought the cheaper brand and the steel ones instead of the better Motion Pro aluminum ones. I think I'm gonna have to replace them with the Motion Pro. I mean, it was quick, it was easy, no damage to the rim, and I can carry these on the bike. So if I'm on a long trip and I have to patch a tire from the inside from a puncture, I can pop it off and do that. Or if my tire wears out and there's no shop around, I could have one sent to a hotel ahead of me when I get there. I've got the tools I need to replace the tire. So I hope this gave you the confidence to change your own tires and I hope to see you out on the road soon.